everybody. Happy Sunday. Uh, just wanted to check in with y'all today since we have our call scheduled for tomorrow night. Wanted to remind you that this is one of our weeks where we have a Monday night call. Um, and then talk to you about a couple of things that have been on my mind. Um, <clears throat> one of them is... Um, it, this keeps coming up again, so I'm going to uh, bring it up again. And that is kneeling before the scale God. Yes, I called it that. And that's a lowercase g. Um, why would I do that? Well, a God is anything that we worship. Anything that has such power and control over us that it changes the way that we feel about ourselves. It changes um, our mood. It tells us whether we are worthy or not. And I know I've talked about the scale in this group before and how often we should weigh and, you know, depending on what your situation is, what that looks like. But this is something that keeps coming back up. And so it was time for me to bring it back up to you guys. Um, the reality is the scale is the least accurate view of what's going on with your body and your health. Um, it literally tells you less than any other way of measuring can tell you. So why is it that we give it godlike status? We give it the power to control our feelings, our emotions, our self-esteem. Uh, honestly, it's, there's two reasons why. One, society. Society has really, um, they've given us all kinds of graphics and um, even in the doctor's office they say if you're this height then you should be this weight. We're given all these standards of measurement around the scale. Um, we're also, it's, you know, standards of beauty are wrapped up in the scale. Um, we, we're told whether we're obese or not. Um, you know, in the past there's even been... Um, depending on like whether you played a sport or whether you did cheer or even you know in the past um airline workers had to weigh the women had to weigh a certain amount or they couldn't work there i mean there's always been these standards that are attached to the scale and society has done that but let's talk about reality the reality is this the scale can fluctuate up 5.5 pounds in any given day. Uh, that is significant. And I can post, um, I have in the group before, but I can post a graphic that shows you where that 5.5 pounds comes from. Um, but it has to do with water weight, it has to do with whether you've gone to the bathroom or not, it has to do with hormonal changes, it has to do with whether you've eaten or not. Um, but the reality is that number can change so drastically even in any given day, much less day to day to day. So, um, as someone who struggled with an eating disorder from age 11 to age 41, and thank God I am free today, uh, a big part of that was the scale. I can remember, you know, especially during my anorexic years, uh, you know, I would um, run a around the block. I would go for these long, long, long 10-mile walks. And, and come back and weigh and see if the scale had gone down. I would use the bathroom. I'd get back on the scale, see if the scale had gone down. I would take laxatives. I would purge. I would do all these things to see if the scale went down. I mean, it was such an obsession. And, and some of you probably recognize some of those behaviors, if not all of them. But how I felt about myself and what I believed I looked like or what I was perceived as was, was always wrapped up in what that number on the scale was. So I understand uh, when I suggest to you that you take a break from the scale, a lot of you are, a lot of you act like I'm suggesting that you um, do something really drastic, like take a break from seeing your kids or your significant other. That's how attached you are to that thing. So there's something you really need to think about. What is my attachment to? What do I believe that the scale is telling me versus what it actually is? Um, the scale can be a decent tool to use, just like everything else that we track. Um, but it is the least valid tool. So, so what is the most valid? The most valid is how you look and feel. Um, I will tell you, um, 
there is a such thing as body dysmorphic disorder and myself and many other people I've worked with over the years who struggle with Ed also struggle with that. You don't know what you look like. Um, you have a perception in your mind of what you look like, but it often doesn't match up with reality. I know there's plenty of days where I feel like I look fat. The very next day, I might not feel that way, and I look the same both days. So we can't, when, when you're a person who feels heavier certain days, and you may or may not be, you can't sometimes even trust the way that you think about yourself or that you look in the mirror. So that's why I always suggest, you know, having a pair of pants that you try on once a week, photographs, comparing two pictures side by side, um, help a lot in the same clothes. Um, that, that's what matters. How do I look and how I feel? How do I feel? How do my clothes fit? Those are things that are tangible because at the end of the day, when you're walking around, nobody cares that this what numbers on the scale, nor do they know. We don't walk around advertising our weight. We simply walk around either with confidence, holding our head high because we're feeling good in our bodies and because our clothes fit well, or we don't. Um, so if you're doing something drastic to make the scale go down, you don't look different um, in fact, you probably look worse. If I look back at old pictures of me where I did struggle with anorexia, where my weight was extremely low, um, I probably felt a little bit better about myself because I felt, you know, my body was smaller and it was skinny, but I look terrible. Looking at those pictures now, I'm like, I look terrible. I didn't look well. Um, and, and again, no one knew what the scale said, and yet that's what I was hanging everything on. Um, so how we look and feel matters more and, you know, how do you know if you need to take a break from the scale? If it changes your mood, you need to take a break. And, and like I said, I call it kneeling before the scale guide. This, and, and I also call that because it is Ed's or the enemy's playground. So if you, um, are feeling decent about yourself, you get up and your clothes fit well and you're feeling good about yourself and you know you've made good de decisions and good choices all week long and then you step on that scale and whatever it says you don't find to match up with what you're seeing and experiencing and you believe the scale over what you experience over the fact that you know your clothes are looser over the fact that you're feeling good over the fact that your stomach feels flatter you know you're smaller if you believe the scale this piece of machinery over what you're actually seeing and experiencing, you've got a problem and it's godlike status to you. Um, if you're feeling good about yourself, you step on that thing and the number doesn't say what you want <laughs> and it makes you feel bad about yourself and you walk around with your head held low all day and you can't even accept a compliment, that thing has godlike status um, in your life and, and you really need to take a break from it. I had to... Um, I had been keto for about a year and a half uh, when I really finally confronted the scale issue in my own life, and it was worse than I even had thought. I thought I was a lot better, um, but I remembered I committed to giving it up for 30 days, um, and I think this was about September of 2017. I committed to give it up 30 days. I found I couldn't even keep my commitment to giving it up. Um, I had taken it out of the bedroom and put it in the basement, and I found myself sneaking down there and weighing. So I realized how much power I had it on me, and I remember I had to give it to my husband to take, take the scale away. I couldn't even trust myself around it. So it's something that it itself is its own stronghold. Remember what a stronghold is? It's something that's formed in deception, a deceptive thought forms a stronghold. So if my deceptive thought is my value is wrapped up on what the scale says, I don't know how I feel about myself when I don't have the scale uh, to tell me how I'm supposed to feel. Uh, the truth is when you take away the scale, it forces you to look for other evidence of change. Um, but if the scale is a stronghold in your life, the only way to really start to break that off is to accept the truth about it and um, to take a break from it. But again, I had to literally, it couldn't, I couldn't have access to it because I couldn't even trust myself to do what I said I was going to do without it physically being gone. Um, so anyway, um, so I did. I wound up giving it up for 30 days. And when I brought it back into my life after that, I realized I had changed. Things had shifted. And I do weigh occasionally now, mostly out of curiosity. 
um, if I'm doing something different, if I'm shifting my eating and I'm experimenting, or sometimes if I'm fasting and I'm curious. But what I've learned from that is the scale rarely matches up with my behaviors um, or it rarely matches up with what I see and feel in the mirror. So, um, for example, um, you know, those of you who know me, you know I do a fast every month. Um, the most recent fast that I did, my scale actually went up. No food. So those people that say to me, oh, you know, I must have really screwed up last night. I ate the wrong thing. I thought I did everything right, but the scale's up, and now I'm panicking, and I'm trying to change something today. <laughs> it is very unlikely that what you ate yesterday, unless it was something obviously inflammatory or way off plan that's going to make you retain water, it, it probably has nothing to do with that. So if I can do a five-day fast and my scale is up, that is evidence that the scale does not reflect the fact that you're probably eating something or not. Um, in my case, part of it is because I started working out. Uh, right? Like I, I'm, I am using my muscles more and, and when you use your muscles, you know how you get sore? Um, it's because those muscle fibers actually tear and the water gets in there and so you actually weigh more. I know people that have quit the gym because the scale went up even though they were loving it, feeling good and looking leaner. The scale guide told them they were going in the wrong direction. It's that powerful. So I wanted to bring this up again because it's a subject that every once in a while I just need to talk about because it feels like every client I have is talking about the scale. And the reality is it's just not accurate. And like I said, it's Ed's playground. He will use it. And the lie that he always says, and this is consistent across the board, he says it to me, he says it to others, when you step on that scale and it's either not moving quick enough, or if it appears to be going in the wrong direction, even though you, everything you know to do, you're doing right, he will say to you, this isn't working. Nothing's happening. This isn't working. You might as well eat. And then he's going to insert you this idea. He's going to plant this idea that you should go have something that is going to cause harm to your body. You see how he takes your dissatisfaction or your, your false belief that has made that thing a stronghold that's growing out that the enemy can grab a hold of and pull you down? That's exactly what he's doing. When you step on that scale, he grabs a hold of that stronghold, the false beliefs about what that scale mean, and he pulls you down with it, and the attempt is to get you to do something that will then harm yourself, set you backwards. So again, you know, I can never tell any of you what to do, but I can tell you, if you've got, if the scale is its own stronghold that the enemy can grab and get you to do things that you otherwise wouldn't do, like eat off plan or overeat, it's something you really need to consider taking a break from. It really is. And find another way to measure your progress because at the end of the day, it's what you look like. It's what you feel like. It's how your clothes fit you. Those are the things that matter. Um, you know, oftentimes on keto, we can lose a tremendous amount of fat and our bodies are much smaller but the scale doesn't reflect that so um for example i can remember um i lost weight many many times on many different kinds of diet believe me i did them all and in the past i would be 100 if i was 170 pounds i would weigh a size i would wear a size 12 pretty consistently right well, when I was on keto, you know, I started off at 309 pounds, and when I got down to right around 200 pounds, guess what size I could wear? A 12. It, it doesn't line up. It's because our bot, it's, it's a couple reasons. Um, keto is anti-inflammatory, but it targets fat loss. We're literally, every moment we're not eating, we are burning fat for energy. We are constantly burning our fat. So our fat cells shrink, but we maintain our muscle. And because our fat cells are shrinking and we maintain our muscle, that doesn't, we are literally smaller. You can wear a smaller size, um, but the scale is not going to reflect what it used to. So I weighed, literally, I weighed like 25 to 30 pounds more and more the same size. And uh, in case you're doubting this, in case you're thinking you're the exception to this, there are many people in this group, I can think of six right now, who will absolutely back me up on this, that they've experienced the exact same thing in their journey. They're like, how am I 100 and 
80 pounds and I'm wearing a size six. Well, guess what? That's the way it works. So anything that can break you, that stronghold off of you and help you understand that the scale really is a liar. It really, truly is. Um, it does not, it's not going to line up with the charts. It's not going to line up with the doctor says you should look like. In fact, I look better with a little bit more weight on me. My lowest weight I actually looked better about five or six pounds above that on keto. And it's a number I never would have thought. I had to really change my goals and it had to not be related to the scale. So my goal had to be more about a feeling, a size, a look than it had to be about a number on the scale because that number doesn't match. And in fact, if I was... 140 pounds, which is what my original goal was, because that's what I had to do to be a size six. I would look terrible. I look way too skinny. Um, but I can, if I could, right now I can wear a size six at 165 pounds. So uh, it's it's just really really important to address this because it itself is its own stronghold. It's the enemy's playground. It's Ed's playground, and if he can grab a hold of that and bring you down then that is something that um, he absolutely will do. So think about that in your own life and see if maybe that's a stronghold. I see that Sarah has joined me. Hey, Sarah, she said, it's so true. Currently in 12s or 14s, Mrs. Large or Extra Large, last time I was the size, I weighed 20 to 30 pounds less. And I will tell you, it is. I was thinking about you, Sarah, as one of those six people in this group that have lost tremendous weight. And you really do see that. You get smaller, the scale doesn't match up. And it's a little bit maddening, but you gotta let it go. You gotta let it go and you just gotta say, this is what I wanna look like. This is, you know, again, even even a size goal can be kind of screwy because <laughs> I know we don't have all ladies in this group. We have a, a two or three guys, but listen, you can go to Old Navy and wear a, a six and then you go to Ann Taylor and you might wear an eight or a 10 or, you know, you go to Banana Republic and you wear an 8 or, you know, it, it's crazy. Even the, the even setting a size goal can be dicey. Instead, make it about a look. Get a pair of pants that you like and say, I want to fit these. This is a reasonable looking size for my body. Um, you know, I always called them future pants. <laughs> Every Friday, I would try on my future pants. And, and that was a big lesson for me about the scale. I remember tr it was a, a Friday, and I got up, and I got on the scale, and I was mad because it was up four pounds. But I put it was the first time I put on my size 10 pants. Ooh, I put them on, and they buttoned, and they zipped, and I could actually wear them. The week before, when I was smaller on the scale, I could get them buttoned and zipped, but there's a way, way I could wear them because I was bloated over the top, the whole muffin top thing. But it, it just became so clear to me that how I look doesn't match up with the number on the scale. And that is a huge thing. So it was important enough for me to bring this up today because I find that the scale itself is its own stronghold. It's almost separate from Ed. It's something Ed uses. The enemy grabs a hold of that stronghold. Remember, it's attached to you based on a deception or a lie. It's grown long because society has backed it up. Everybody has told you your worth in the scale, whether you played sports, whether it was your parents, whether it was Weight Watchers, whoever it was, they told you that the scale was most important. So that stronghold has grown and grown and grown and grown. And, and this is just another way that you need to be free. It's something you need to let go of, cut off, and be glad about. Um, and then look for other evidence of change. And, and the truth is now in my life, and I've come a long way, if someone took the scale away from me and I could never ever weigh again, I would say, huh. Um, Sarah said, very true. In some stores, I'm a comfortable loose 12 and others, I'm shoehorning myself into a 16. I'm following your formula. I have some gold jeans I try on. Staying off the scale can be challenging, but it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. It, you're loosening the hold that the scale has on you. But you really, you, you know, all of us have to get to that place where we're like, I'm not going to allow any piece of machinery to affect my mood. If I'm feeling good about myself and I step on that scale and then I feel bad, or it makes me throw out all other evidence of change. That thing is not a good thing. That thing needs to go away from your life for a while, if not forever. Um, so anyway, that's what was on my heart today. Also wanted to remind you that tomorrow is our week four call. Tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern. Of course, I'll post a reminder and a link 
but wanted to tell you guys to just um, that I was thinking about you and again the scale has come up so often during my conversations in the last week I just wanted to pass that on to you as well so I hope that you're having a good day and a good weekend and I will see y'all live tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Eastern on our week four zoom talk to you then bye